Hey guys, Joe here, doing a video on a pickup truck, and it's kind of one that I joked about a little bit and kind of intimated that I was going to do a few times, and it is, of course, the 2016 Chevy Colorado with the Duramax diesel. I know it's taken me a while to do this video. I don't know why I put it off so long. I think it's because I originally wanted to do it on one that had some extras on it, some bigger wheels, tires, it was an upgraded package, and we sold it before I got around to doing the video, and I just decided at that point that I would hold off. But here we are today, I have the truck, it's my day off, so I'm shooting a bunch of videos, so serendipity, kismet, whatever you want to call it, we're doing it today. So here's the truck in all of its black glory. This has the LT luxury package on it, which as we walk up to it, I'll point out a few things. Basically, it's the chrome. You see the chrome on the mirror cap? Hi there. And the chrome door handles, the chrome trim around it. Otherwise, it would just be monochromatic. Either way, I like. I actually like this because it's a smaller amount of chrome than like a Bighorn Edition Ram or even the standard LT package Silverado. This is the badge that you always want to look for. If you want to make sure that it has a diesel, it should have that badge. If it's missing that badge and it's a diesel, it's been in an accident. The 17 inch wheels, as I said, this one is rolling on Goodyear Wrangler tires. I've had these tires before. They're a pretty solid tire. In the snow, they're probably not quite as good as some of the upper end versions of the tire, but they do suit the truck just fine. These are the running boards I was telling you about, and as I said, inside the vehicle, you can probably get these cheaper, and quite frankly, when you look at the lines of this truck, a flat running board actually doesn't work. This truck should have a rounded running board, or at least an oval running board, not a completely flat standing pad like that. I did verify before saying this, but this one is lined by us. A welcome feature that Chevrolet put on their trucks with the new version was the side steps here into the bumper that allow you to get into the tailgate. Because one thing this truck has that I really like is the easy opening tailgate, because as you know, all the previous models, you open it, slam, and it could damage it, could mess up the hinge down here and cause all kinds of issues. Coming to the front, this one does have the optional HID headlights, along with the nice little fog lights. And overall, I really have to say I like the styling on this truck. Looks really good. It's clean. It's not overt. It's not covert. It's just that right amount of vert. So, yeah, I'm sure you can hear she's a little bit loud. But I don't think a diesel should be super quiet anyway. I like a diesel to make a little bit of noise so that you know it's a diesel. As I said earlier, it displaces 2.8 liters. It makes 181 horsepower, but it does make 369 foot-pounds of torque. That's the important number. I'm going to close the hood because it's quite loud. I've decided to start on the passenger side. As you can see, it's just a single glove box, unlike the Silverado, which has the dual glove box. Panning through, you have the 8-inch navigation touchscreen display, and this one is of the new generation so as you can see no CD player so this one can only be used with a smartphone or an aux cord or a device with Bluetooth all the controls obviously are knobs and buttons and that is a good thing because that means that a person wearing gloves will be able to manipulate everything in the winter or if you're on a work site and you just need to hop in and set your AC, you can do whatever you need to. Coming down here, this was the trailer brake controller that I was telling you about, if it ever focuses. There you go. Traction control, hazards, dome light, and this one is the lane departure. Yes, this is a work truck. Well, it's actually more than just a work truck, but this is a work truck with lane departure. Heated seats, both sides. Kind of refreshing. A nice little center console shifter. You don't see that enough, although the Ford F-150 in the premium trim levels has a center uh, shifty bobber thingy, uh, shifty, sorry. Coming up here, it's a very similar dashboard to the Silverado, however, because of its size constraints, it only has two gauges in the upper cluster, the fuel gauge and the temp gauge. 
but other than that it's pretty much the same as you can see it's kind of funny the tack doesn't even have a red line on this one let's face it you're never going to rev out a diesel anyway uh, speedometer is on this side and of course in the center stack your configurable display for your multi-functions the steering wheel is very similar to the one in the pickup trucks this is for your uh, adaptive cruise control and all that stuff. The main difference, of course, is that the link departures over here versus on the steering wheel. This side is identical to the other vehicle. Trailer brake control is on this side as well, but it's in its own integrated little space because if it didn't have it, this would just be a regular textured piece. So that's kind of neat. That way you don't have a big black space with nothing in it. 4x4 controls as well as the headlight controls. It might just be me, but this seems like something that could accidentally be messed with because if you're just jumping in the truck and you're not paying any attention, you just reach down and spin a knob, you might actually take it and put it into four-wheel drive when you're meaning to turn on your headlights. Or you just do like I do and I said before, you just throw it in auto and leave it there. As I was saying, good visibility. These pillars, of course, they've all gotten thicker and thicker and thicker over the years, but it's not terrible. The rake of the windshield allows me to have enough vision between the two. One thing I really like in my Mustang has these are the blind spot mirror thingies. I'm super technical today, but yeah, that's a convenient thing to have so you can see inside your blind spots. Now I'm going to hop into the back seat and we'll see how I fit. Okay, so yes, I'm a little bit crammed back here. But that's to be expected. However, to be fair, it has about the same room in the back seat that the double cab did. I could move this seat this seat forward a little bit and probably give the back seat passenger a little bit more room. In fact, I can see from looking at it that I'd be perfectly comfortable on the passenger side. Looking down here, you have your ubiquitous power ports and USB ports. And of course, you have your standard ones up there. That's why I didn't bother showing them. I mean, how many times do you want me to point it out and say, ooh, USB! Ooh, power outlet. Ooh, smart charging one in the center console. So, anyway, headroom's not bad. Again, for the size of the vehicle, I could be okay comfortable back here. I wouldn't want to be back here every day. But then again, I'm the big guy, so I'd be sitting up front anyway. Taking a look at the window sticker we have in front of us, you'll see that this one is rated at 29 highway, 20 city, and 23 miles per gallon average. Now that is because this is a four-wheel drive. If you bought the two-wheel drive version, you could get 31 miles per gallon. So you sacrifice a couple of miles per gallon, but still 29 miles per gallon in a truck that is very comfortable and capable is really nice to have. As you can see, this one was originally optioned out as the 3.6 liter V6 in the six-speed auto, yet in the options list, it's a $4,000 add-on, so be prepared for that, kids. But it has the 2.8 Duramax turbo diesel. It's got a few extras on it. It has the luxury package, which includes all of this stuff here, as you can see as we go down, till you get to here. And then you have the leather seats, which are a $950 option, $725 for tube steps, which we installed because they were shipped to us with it. And then of course you have the LT convenience package, which is remote start, rear window slider, and duh, rear window defroster. Come on brain, use some words. 395 is actually a pretty good price for a safety package, including lane departure warning and collision alert. I don't mind that at all. I think that should be on there, especially if your vehicle is going to be driven by children. And by children, I mean children of driving age, unless it's farm use. But why would you buy a brand new truck for farm use? that's small <sighs> one of these days I'm gonna make a video without offending somebody I promise one thing I wanted to point out on that window sticker that you could probably get away without are the running boards you could probably buy them aftermarket through JC Whitney or your local believe it or not most tire shops bigger tire shops offer accessories as well so there are other ways you can get nice steps I picked up a really nice set for my father's ram for a gift when he first got the truck and they were 219 dollars for really nice black tubular ones that look factory that lasted seven years until he hit a big rock first impression is it's a very small diesel it's only a 2.8 liter it's also quite slow 
one of my co-workers who is used to high performance vehicles and i am accustomed to them as well but he's more accustomed to them than i am if that's possible he describes the acceleration of this vehicle as dangerously slow it's not quite that bad but i would put it on the same basic level as a hybrid so you're not going to get the world's fastest acceleration but it's not going to be the slowest thing on the block but only by about that much the one good thing about it and this was a point that he was making to me because he was asking the question well i wonder how slow it would be if it was loaded down the good thing about a diesel is when they make a bunch of torque they're capable of still maintaining the same basic acceleration curve even when they are loaded down so fully loaded this thing probably won't accelerate too much slower it will accelerate slower of course but i can't imagine that it would be so much slower that it would become dangerous on the road obviously they wouldn't be allowed to put this vehicle on the road if it was dangerously slow it's an extremely warm day out so i do have the ac turned on so i do apologize if you're hearing some fan noise the ride i've never driven a colorado either the previous version or this one so i'm quite pleasantly surprised at the ride in this one it's not jarring it's not like the old short wheelbase stuff like the rangers and things like that it has a good length to it so it has a good ride to it this is by no means a small truck this falls into the same kind of category as like the ford fusion and a few other cars where it's bumping up against the wall of the next class up of vehicle technically this is close to being a full-size truck but for marketing purposes for epa rating purposes for all those other purposes it's considered a mid-sized truck being a diesel it does have a few extras on it like the engine brake feature which is not turned on currently but it's a good thing to have especially when you're hauling a load in a lighter pickup truck like this so it allows you to have a little bit more control over the load visibility is very good headroom is very good uh, it looks like they added a little bit of an extra cutout here just to make sure that pass front seat passengers have that little bit of extra room and to allow for the overhead console the six-speed automatic shifts pretty smooth and the motor itself is actually quite smooth i'm not dissatisfied in it in any way it is of course a little bit louder since it is a compression engine it doesn't use spark plugs it just uses compression to fire off I just took an off-ramp 15 miles an hour over the speed limit and it felt pretty stable some vehicles you get in they have the wrong ride height they feel too high they feel too wobbly this one feels okay so this one is riding on the 17 inch blade silver wheels don't know why they call them blade silver but they seem pretty nice they look good with the size of this vehicle I don't know how much bigger I would go for a daily driver truck like this. I've seen some trucks with like custom 20s, 22s on them on the Colorados. Don't know how much I care for that. These 17s kind of fit the look of the truck. It seems like a little bit smaller, chunkier truck. So 35 miles an hour, I'm gonna go foot down. Sixty. So that took a little bit, but again i don't feel that it's dangerously slow but it is rather peckish so let's see how it handles a marked 25 mile an hour off ramp on ramp whichever one you want to call it an interchange ramp i'm taking it at 37 miles an hour i'm leaning more than the truck here i'll sit upright my natural tendency is to lean into the turns and i apologize but at 37 miles an hour, a little bit over, the body roll feels pretty well controlled. Not too bad. A couple of big thunks, but nothing too bad. Yeah, handled that pretty darn well. So this truck is kind of Chevrolet's answer to the Dodge Ram Eco Diesel. And it's not a bad answer to it. It's as close to a 1500 as you're going to get with a diesel from GM because obviously they have no reason to put a diesel in the 1500 of their trucks because they sell the colorado if dodge still sold the dakota you can bet your sweet bippy that would have been the one that got the diesel just realized my dealer tag is flipped backwards right now
So there you be. This is the 2016 Chevy Colorado Duramax diesel. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you hate the video, give me a thumbs down. But you'll actually put on five pounds every time you hit the dislike button. How do you think the world's fattest man became the world's fattest man? He didn't like anything. Now he's dead. I would like to thank Ted Britt, as usual, for letting me borrow the truck. I will leave their information in the description down below if you'd like to check out the website, check out some of the vehicles, and maybe ask me some questions about it. If there's something more specific you'd like to know, please ask me and I will check it out specifically for you. Because I do a pretty generalized overview of the vehicle and I can't get to every feature because then the videos would be an hour long. So until I see you again, talk to you later.